Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm All Things Wrestling, and today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on WWE Fastlane 2017. We start with the pre show where we see Noam Dark and Alicia Fox in the back. Noam talks about having something to celebrate tonight. Brian Kendrick shows up and he tells Dar that he has a chance to learn something tonight. They will make Sarah realise that he made a mistake. Dar says he is looking forward to winning for Alicia Fox. Kendrick says he hopes no one has a meltdown to cost them. Dar says they will celebrate together after they win. Kendrick says he does not do crazy and walks off. Good segment. Uh, and then we see Cesaro and Sheamus on the kickoff show panel to talk about the tag team title match. Sheamus says he feels like they should be defending the titles. They, he said they were robbed by Gallows and Anderson. They were screwed out their rematch. Cesaro stands up and gets a big pop from the crowd. He says no one wants to see him sitting behind a table. They want to see them wrestle. The crowd is not as happy for Sheamus, but Cesaro said Sheamus brought out the best in him last year. They ended the New Day streak. Booker said you have to represent yourself and you cannot cry over spilt milk like Seamus. And Sarah said that Seamus goes around and bro kicks everyone. Peter says it, if it means anything for WrestleMania that they are not on this show. Seamus and Sarah said that they will get their next title match. Renee says who would you rather see win? Seamus points out that Sarah is the angry one tonight. Seamus said that he won't mind facing both teams because it, they can beat both teams. Everyone pick Gallows and Anderson to win. Alright segment, it did what it needed to do. Then we see Mick on the phone with Stephanie and she says he understands that she's delayed. Stephanie says there's a huge match tonight with Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal enters the office. Jinder says he's no longer a team with Rusev. Their future was ruined by Rusev's attitude. Rusev and Lana enters. Mick comments on Rusev's new hairdo because he does look sexy as fuck. Jinder and Rusev argue about wrestling each other tonight. Mick suggests a best of seven series and everyone says no way Mick. Mick then says, you'll find an opponent for both men and they will decide who wrestles first. Everyone leaves, but Stephanie is still on the phone. Good segment, I enjoyed that. And then Samoa Joe is getting prepared for his time in the social media lounge with shit interviewer number two. Uh, her first question was, why did you side with Triple H and attack Seth Rollins? Joe said that Triple H gave him the opportunity in WWE. That opportunity was to take out Seth Rollins. Why are people mad at him for being able to succeed? The second question is about how he will destroy Sami Zayn. Joe said he will punish Sami over and over until he cannot get up. Zay, Sami showed no respect and he has to show Sami what it means when you disrespect him. And the final question is what is his plan for WrestleMania? Joe says his present will be felt at WrestleMania. What, what he does at WrestleMania will be revealed soon enough. I enjoyed that segment. It was a heel Joe doing what he needed to do. It was pretty good. The pre-show was overall pretty good. Then we go to the f only pre-show match. Uh, Kira Tozawa and Rich Swan versus Brian Kendrick and Noam Dar. Uh, Tozawa with a German suplex to Kendrick and then Swan hits the Phoenix Splash for the three count. The faces win, which surprised me. Uh, really good match. The main thing is Rich Swan pinned Brian Kendrick, not Akira Tozawa, so maybe their rivalry is going to continue. I would be happy with that, to be fair. I like that idea. Uh, the match was actually really, really good. For a pre-show match, it's getting the highest rating I've ever given a pre-show match. 7 out of 10. It was generally good, and it could have fit on the main show. Uh, and speaking of the main show, we'll go straight to the first match. Samoa Joe versus Sami Zayn. I'm surprised it opened the show, but it was a good match anyway. Uh, Zayn uh, with boots to Joe, and then Zayn goes up top. Joe stops and goes to for Muscle Buster, but Zayn blocks it. Joe with an enziguri and then Joe sets up for a superplex but Zayn blocks it. Zayn for the forearms to the back and then he tries to do a sunset, sunset flip power bomb, but Joe holds onto the ropes. Joe, Joe is dropped onto the turnbuckle. Zayn goes for the Luva kick but Joe with the ST Joe and then Joe applies the Kikina clutch and Zayn passes out. It was a really good match. I enjoyed it. Zayn got a lot of offense in compared to what I was expecting. It wasn't a complete squash match. Which is what I was hoping it wouldn't be. So it was overall really good. I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, then we go to shit interview number 2 with Bailey. She asked Bailey about having to defend the title against the Queen of Pay Per View. Bailey said the, char the champion is usually the favourite, but Charlotte has an advantage in pay per view matches. She expects that Dana Brooke will be at ringside with her, but Bailey will be up for the challenge. If Charlotte's so great, why not leave Dana Brooke in the locker room and find out who the better woman is? Nia Jax stops by and says Bailey had so much to worry about tonight. She said she will rip Bailey's best friend to shreds. If by some miracle Charlotte does not win the title from Bailey, she will. Uh, the segment was good with Bailey until Nia turned up and it kind of 
sank a little bit. It wasn't too bad. Uh, and then we go to Enzo Amore and Big Cat in the ring. Enzo says, Gallows and Anson are being mean and making green. Colin said they are about the books like Milwaukee. Enzo says that me, they have mean genetics. Enzo said that you are two are like thumbs and they aren't here to pick up hitchhikers. <sighs> then we go to the match. Gallo sends um, Cass into the ring barrier. Enzo with a splash off the apron onto Gallows. Enzo gets back into the ring and Anderson with a knee. Anderson with a three count as Gallows pushes Enzo's foot off the rope. Despite the fact his hand is still under the goddamn rope. Seriously. It weren't a good match. It was pretty bad to be fair. What the hell is going on with their tag team division on Raw? It's just failing. It got a 4 out of 10 from me. Because it was pretty shit. I don't, but all teams are good. But I just don't know. Uh, then we go to Mick and Stephanie, and Stephanie's still on the phone. Mick, Stephanie says that she is still on the tarmac and doesn't know when she'll be there. Stephanie tells Mick that the woman's talking the universe to talk better come off without a hit. She said that she'll be on the phone for the rest of the show to make sure things go right. Stephanie asks about Samoa Joe and she said to be taken off speaker. Stephanie then gets disconnected after they have a bit of a conversation. It was a pretty funny segment, to be fair. Then we go to match three, Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks. A huge, huge improvement over the last match. That's not saying much, but still. Uh, Sasha with the tornado DDT into the bank statement. Nia gets back to her feet and she gets Sasha on her back uh, with a spine buster and a leg drop to the back. Then uh, she taunts Sasha and shakes her around. Gets Sasha on the shoulder. Sasha with a roll up and a backland bridge for the three count. Sasha actually wins. It wasn't a bad match. Five and a half out of ten. Which, to be honest, the last match was two out of ten. So, a massive improvement. Massive improvement, girls. To be fair, good job. If you could try and put on a better performance than a two out of ten, please. Because, I'm sorry, but your bloody roadblock in the line match, was it? Was a sack of shit. Or was it Royal Rumble? I can't remember. But either way, the last match you two out on the pay-per-view was shit. It's nice to see you back on form again, Sasha. Uh, and then we see what happens on the kickoff show with Jinder and Rusev. Uh, they come to the ring for the matches and they start exchanging punches. Mohal sent to the floor. Rusev sends him into the ring person Mohal with running knee to the head, taking out Rusev for a little bit. So we find out that Jinder Mohal will be facing Star uh, Cesaro. Match was all right. Cesaro signaled for a giant swing, but Mohal grabs the ropes. Mahal was a series of kicks and both men are down. Rusev got up and distracted Mahal and Cesaro pinned him after an uppercut forearm. Eh, fairly good match, 6 out of 10. Uh, after the match, Rusev sent Mahal into the ring post, punches and kicks Mahal and Rusev with a jumping thrust kick to Mahal. Then we find out Rusev's opponent is the Big Show. Uh, show goes for a chair slam, but Rusev escapes, kicks Show in the knee, and he connects with two frost kicks. A third one, Show's down, and then he gets a near fall, and then goes three match kicks, and then Rusev stomps on his back multiple times, but Show pushes Rusev to the floor, then choke slam, puts the straps down, another choke slam, and then a third choke slam, puts him into the corner, uh, puts his head on the uh, turnbuckle signals for the care punch and punches him in the head and then pins him I guess it makes him look strong that way because he had to take three chokes and a knockout punch to actually get pinned it was alright 6 out of 10 again they were both fairly average I enjoyed them anyway honest I enjoyed the Kevin, the Big Show Rusev match a lot more than the bloody Jinder Cesaro, if you watch my live reactions, it will be up in a couple of hours. Uh, then, shit interview number two was with Kevin Owens. She asked Kevin about this being the biggest match of his career, and he says he wants to know why this is his biggest match. Kevin asks who Goldberg's been in the last three months, the last five years, or the last ten years. Goldberg has been one man in the last ten years. Kevin says he's been in the ring in the last two years, and he's beaten all. Kevin says he is outsmarted. He will Alex Martin out wrestle Bill Goldberg. He'll beat whoever he puts in front of him. He does not care if it's Sami Zayn, Brock Lesnar, or The Rock. He is the best. Not even Goldberg can change that. This is the Kevin Owens show, and this will be the Kevin Owens show tomorrow and for however long he wants it to be. Good promo. I enjoyed it. Then we go to. Yeah, match of the night. 
<laughs> this actually got my match of the night. The Cruiserweight Championship match, Neville versus Jack Gallagher. This proves why Cruiserweights can be good. This got a, this is awesome chant. This has not happened in the Cruiserweight match yet. Alright, a couple of good spots. Gallagher did a couple of headstands in the corner, which I enjoyed. Um, ooh. Oh yeah, Neville uh, misses a drop kick. Gallagher with a headbutt. Neville with a boot and then another head but off the right from Gallagher. Uh, Gallagher falls onto Neville and gets a near fall. Gallagher lands on his feet. Neville with a cross kick and sends Gallagher into the apron. Gallagher knocks Neville off the turnbuckle. Gallagher puts Neville on the turnbuckle and Gallagher with a headbutt. Neville is laying on the turnbuckle against a ring post. Gallagher sets up for a superplex but Neville drops Gallagher to the mat. Neville with a red arrow for the three count. It was really, really good. This match got a 9 out of 10. It was really good. Then the shit interview number 2 is with Paul Heyman in the interview area. And she asks if this means Paul, if Brock Lesnar is here because Paul is here. He introduces himself and says his client has the right to be here tonight at Fastlane. Whether his client exercises the option to this privileged information the winner of the universal title is his client if Goldberg wins Goldberg will go to WrestleMania and lose the title to his client if Kevin Owens wins tonight he can only do so by exploiting a weakness of vulnerability that they'll have not seen before Goldberg would go to WrestleMania with a weakness exposing his client beat Goldberg and move on to the universal title match the ultimate winner of the universal title match is his client great Paul Hamo great Paul Heyman promo as usual then the New Day come out and they have an ice cream cart. Xavier says, when they had the first idea for booty the only thing they had was a t-shirt and a dream. Your voices were heard. He start, Biggie starts to sing Randy Orton's theme song. Xavier says their dream turned into reality. He said the t-shirt and the dream for ice cream. They stand before you with the ice cream doom and someone has the opportunity. You have the opportunity to make your voices heard. Xavier said they want... This is bad as you. Xavier says they're going to ride this bike along and hard as your host at WrestleMania. I enjoyed the promo. And I really am getting behind the ice cream idea at the minute. Good job, New Day. Then we go to Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns. One nice spot. Reigns goes to the floor and hits a drive-by. Reigns sets up for a spell on the floor, but Strowman catches him and the power slams him through the Spanish announce table. It looked fucking brutal. It was good. Uh, finish Strowman with a body block and Reigns goes down. Strowman goes to the top and tries to hit Frog Splash. Fucking mate. He actually cleared like three quarters of the ring. Bloody mental. Uh, Reigns move and then spear for the three count. Reigns wins. Clean. I was not impressed. I am still not impressed. Fuck you, Reigns. Let's move on. And then Mick Foley's walking in the back and he wants to talk to Samoa Joe. Mick Foley tells Joe that Stephanie's not here so he's in charge. Stephanie would not want Joe out there with Kevin Owens. Mick said that Kevin Owens, he knows, wouldn't want Samoa Joe to take the match. Mick says he would like for this to be the last time he sees Joe's face. If not, there will be hell to pay. Have a nice day. Good promo. Why are we getting the decent Mick tonight when he's going away? The hell? Uh, then we go to the Raw Women's title match. Bailey versus Charlotte. Bailey avoids a figure four figure, figure of four leg lock. Bailey punches Charlotte, but Charlotte press slams Bailey off the apron. Charlotte goes to the top and goes from Moonsault onto Bailey. Sasha comes to the ring, and Charlotte and Bailey go into the ring. Bailey with a belly to belly suplex on the floor. They return to the ring. Charlotte with an inside crazy. Sasha tells the referee about the tan full of ties. Bailey with a belly to belly suplex for the three count. That is right. Bailey just defeated. Charlotte clean in the middle of the ring, breaking a pay per view streak, and then retaining her fucking title. If you watch my live reactions, I freak the fuck out, and I'm still happy about this moment. Bailey fucking won. Seriously, Bailey won. Bailey goddamn won. Uh, the match got an 8 out of 10. Did I give a match rating to Reigns? Oh no, I didn't. Uh, Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns got a 6.5 out of 10. Oh yeah, Charlotte and Bailey got. A Eight out of ten. There was a weird spot in the corner where Charlotte was holding herself up and Baby was trying to do something. It just didn't work. It's weird. Then we go on to the main event of the evening. 
Before the bell rings, Owens goes to the floor, he takes his time while Goldberg does some more stretching. Owens gets on the open, then goes back to the floor. Owens gets in the ring, then he goes back to the floor. Owens wants the bell to be rung, then Chris Jericho's music plays. Goldberg with the spear jackhammer as Jericho watches from the stage. Goldberg wins. In 22 fucking seconds. Upon the bell ringing, to the bell going again, the match only lasted... 22 seconds. Because when he kept going to the floor, the match had not started. 22 seconds! It took Jericho... took Owens to lose his goddamn title. Okay, Jericho cost him. I have to be happy about that one, but I don't think it was necessary. But I'm not going to beat the point to death with a stick right now. But anyway, these have been my thoughts on... Oh, 5 out of 10 for the Goldberg-Kevin Owens match. <laughs> I don't know how I could give it a 5 out of 10. I gave the entire segment... Of, oh, Goldberg had his old WCW entrance with all the security guards and everything, the police officers, which was very nice. I gave from the whole all the entrances up to the end a 5 out of 10. If I had to give the match an actual rating, it has to get about a 1. Because it was a fucking 22 second match. So the whole segment gets a 5 out of 10. I'm not going to just rate the match itself because it wouldn't get a very good rating. So yeah, Goldberg is the Universal Champion. Yay. Well, God, God mate, Raw's going to be interesting tomorrow, so let's see how far that goes. Anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you have. Subscribe to more content, and I'll catch you later.